So in this lab assignment is a skills integration challenge, and we are going through um, configuring DHCP. We are configuring some VLANs. So we got a lot going on in this particular um, lab assignment. We've got sub interfaces going on. If you look at our um, address and table up there, so we're going to create VLANs on S2 first, and we're you know these directions. Remember in the skills challenges, they tell you what to do, but they don't exactly tell you a lot of detail on how to do it. So we're going to create VLANs on F2 and assign VLANs to appropriate ports. Case names are case, or sorry, names are case sensitive. Remember, always for grading, they are case sensitive. So let me zoom in here a little bit. So we're going to create VLANs on S2 and assign VLANs to appropriate ports. So basically, we want to make sure that we look at these VLANs that we need. So just kind of summarizing here, we need VLAN 10, we need VLAN 20. We need VLAN 30 and we need a VLAN 40. And these are the names, sales, production, marketing, and HR, okay? Now, it also says to go ahead and assign it to certain ports. So you see here, these are my ports. So for FA05 through nine, I wanna make sure to put that in VLAN 10 only. So if we're gonna put that in VLAN 10 only, um, does anybody remember what mode do we need to put that port in? Is it access mode or trunking mode if we only want it to carry VLAN 10? Access. It's going to be access mode if you have one. It's trunking mode if you want any more than that. That's right. So any more than one, trunking mode. Just one VLAN, whatever VLAN that happens to be, access mode. So we're going to start with going to S2 and creating these VLANs first. Then we're going to go to these port ranges and assign, uh, put them in access mode and assign these respective VLANs. So let's create these first, 10, 20, 30, and 40, and we're going to name them. So we're going to go over to S2, and I know a lot of ports are, are going on here. I'm going to widen this out a little bit. Okay. And again, if you kind of look at our topology before we do that real quick, you kind of see here that all four of these PCs are directly plugged into S2. Okay. So you can always kind of tell as well, hey, these definitely need to be created, these VLANs. You see PC1 is carrying VLAN 10, PC2 is carrying VLAN 20, PC3 is carrying VLAN 30, PC4 is carrying VLAN 40. And you can kind of see they're plugged into uh, ports 5, 12, 15, 20. And what will happen is these ports here will fall within those ranges that we have. So the ranges we did were 5 through 9, or we'll do 5 through 9 for VLAN 10. If I come plug a port in VLAN, or sorry, in port 6 here, it's in that five to nine range, so it'll automatically be in VLAN 10, unless I go back and change it, okay? So on S2, I'm gonna do enable, config T, and we're gonna create the VLANs, and the command for that in configuration mode is VLAN and the number. So I'll do VLAN 10, you press enter, and then we wanna name it. So to name it, the command is just name. And again, you should see it say config dash VLAN when you're naming it. We'll do name sales with a capital S, S-A-L-E-S, -E so it can grade it appropriately. Press enter. And now you have two options here. You can exit back out if you like to. If you would have just typed VLAN 20, where it says config dash VLAN, it would have actually created VLAN 20 from there as well. And then you could have just named it. It would have saved you one step each time, but that's okay. I'm gonna just exit back out. Then we'll do VLAN 20, name production, VLAN 30, name marketing, and VLAN 40, name HR. And I'm gonna hold off right there for a second and let you guys catch up. So basically, again, it is just VLAN. And then when you see it say config dash VLAN, you do the name and then whatever name you want it to be. Now, remember, if you ever make a mistake, 
you can always do no, and like here, I'll show you how, no VLAN 10, right? It will erase VLAN 10 from the database completely um, because again, sometimes we make typos where we create a VLAN 11 by accident, right? Our, our finger might have typed two ones instead, right? Um, but then you can just go back and create the correct one. If you ever name it incorrectly, you just do no name, whatever it is. And really, I believe if you just do name and the new name, it'll overwrite the old one too. Okay, so Mr. Lucas, the last VLAN we need is VLAN 40 for right now, right? Yes. That is correct. So we should have VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40. And remember to check that we do a show VLAN brief. I'm gonna do a do show VLAN brief here since I'm in configuration mode. And again, you wanna widen this out because it'll look really crazy when it's bunched up like this. Probably wanna widen this out as much as you can here on your um, terminal screen. And you should see 10, 20, 30, 40 here. We haven't made any port assignments yet, but they should be named sales, production, marketing, and HR. Okay. Now let's get to assigning the ports to that VLAN, right? So any traffic leaving ports five through nine, I wanna tag it with VLAN 10 in the packet, or it's really in the frame. We should use the correct terminology, sorry. Frame, I should say, um, because we're working at layer two here. Remember, we're doing switching. So we'll do interface range. Remember, this allows us to, to configure more than one port at a time. Now. You can go into each one individually and do interface FA05, configure it, exit back out. Interface FA06, configure it, exit back out. But I'm telling you, if you just get the interface range command down, it will save you a lot of time. So we'll do FA0 slash five, and then you can do dash nine. What that allows it to know is, I'm gonna do zero slash five, zero slash six, zero slash seven, zero slash eight, zero slash nine, all at one time. And you press enter and it should say config interface range. Again, you only wanna use this when you are configuring the same commands on all of those ports. So if you're doing like a router and doing IP addresses, you wouldn't wanna do that because each one's gonna have a unique IP address. Now, if you wanna just turn off a bunch of ports or turn on a bunch of ports, totally fine. You can do the range command or what we're doing now. So interface range FA05-9, and then we're gonna do switch port mode access. So all of them are gonna be in access mode because we only wanted to carry one VLAN and then we'll do switch port access VLAN 10. And then we're really just gonna kind of rinse and repeat that, but for different VLANs and different ports. And I'm really just getting this from what it's telling me over here. Now, of course, obviously, if you were to consult your diagram over here and you looked at here, then you might only do one port instead of a range, but you'll see here, oh, FA012 is what PC2 is plugged into and it's carrying VLAN 20. So I need to make sure I go into FA012, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20, right? Same thing here, PC3 is plugged into port 15 up there, all right? And then PC4, again, VLAN 40 is plugged into 20, okay? But they want us to do a range of ports. So the one that's plugged into will definitely fall in that range for sure. So now interface range FA010 through 14, switch port mode access, switch port, access VLAN 20, interface range FA0 15 through 19, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 30, and then interface range FA0 20 through 24, switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 40. And I'm gonna wait right there for everybody to catch up.
So again, they usually tell you what the range of ports are going to be uh, for each VLAN. However, if they didn't, then you should be able to at least see in our diagram there, hey, PC10 on my diagram says it needs VLAN 10. Now, they at least have to tell you that. Um, but it might say, hey, PC1 needs VLAN 10 on my diagram. Let me see what port PC1 is plugged into. Oh, it's plugged into FA08. All right, then I need to make sure to um, assign it access mode with VLAN 10. Now here again, they wanted a range of ports, so they would have to tell you that kind of information. Everybody good on that part though? Are those two parts so far? Uh, just a second, I'm on the last part. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like this, Melissa. All right. right now, last in the beer. Uh, hey, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, on the last part, I just typed in FA020 through 24. It's not working. Right. Did you do interface range uh, FA0 slash 20 dash 24? Oh, I forgot the interface part. Yeah, yeah. Just a second. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still saying invalid input detected. Okay, make sure you do the range part. Cool. Okay. Switch part access. Did that work that time? Access. Uh, yeah, I'm on the switch part access. Okay. Forty. Okay, I'm good now. All right. Dominique, you good? Good, Miss Lucas. Miss Lucas. All good. right. So that basically again reviews creating our VLANs naming the VLANs, and then assigning the VLANs to certain ports. So again, if we go back and do a do show VLAN brief, we, and again, this is where you kind of need to widen it out a little bit so it doesn't get so jumbled up. But you can see here for VLAN 10, the sales, we've got FA0, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. For VLAN 20, for production, we've got them assigned to ports 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. For VLAN 30, marketing, we've got them assigned to 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And for VLAN 40, we've assigned to 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, right? The VLAN 1 up here, this was by default. That, the, that's just what all ports are automatically in. We didn't make any changes for 3, 4, gigabit 0, 1, or gigabit 0, 2. So they'll stay there for now. Hey, uh, Mr. Lucas, uh, our lab progress should be on 12%, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. All right. So, again, making sure you look at your diagram, if they didn't give you the port ranges and they just said, hey, assign appropriate VLANs to the appropriate PCs, you could look here and say, hey, PC1's plugged into FA05. Let me go put that in access mode for VLAN 10. PC2 is in FA012. Let me go put that in access mode for VLAN 20 and so on for FA015 with PC3 and VLAN 30. And then same thing for FA020 with PC4 and VLAN 40. If they didn't give you those ranges, you should still be able to look at the diagram and be able to figure that out based off of uh, what, po what uh, port each PC is plugged into and what VLAN they should be carrying. Now we're gonna configure S2 ports for trunking. Now, which ports should be in trunking mode on S2? Well, anything that is plugged into either another switch, okay? So think about the way this traffic leaves here. Let me get my annotation and highlight my mouse here. So anything, and let me zoom out a little bit. So if traffic's gonna leave PC1 
and needs to travel up to, let's say, this Cisco server up here, okay? So what'll happen is it'll leave PC1, go up FA05, get to PC2, or sorry, to switch to, and it's going to pause. Now, it could take many different paths. It could go over to switch three. It could go over to switch one. It could also choose FA01 or two to get up to switch one, or if it could choose FA03 or four going over to switch three, right? Either way, it can get there and still go to R1, okay? It just depends on if ports are down, what the traffic is like, and so on, okay? Looks like all ports are green and open, so it's really just kind of a crapshoot to see which one is going to do. Um, usually, it tries to do other things like uh, STP might try to block certain ports so it doesn't create switching loops and stuff that we've covered this semester. But right now, we're just kind of looking at what should be in trunking mode. So anything switch to switch here should be in trunking mode because... Not only does it need to carry VLAN 10 if PC1 sending something, it needs to carry VLAN 20 if PC2 needs to send something. It's still going to have to go across these same switches. Same thing for PC3, okay, for VLAN 30, and same thing for PC4. All that traffic is coming into S2, and then it's going to get distributed out either to S3 and then over to S1 and then up to router one, or it'll go from S2 directly to S1 and then up to router one. So all of these ports in between here between S1, S2, and S3 all need to carry all the VLAN traffic. So for that, we are gonna make sure to put them in trunking mode, not access mode, all right? So we're gonna put them in trunking mode. So on S2 here, all right, we're gonna type in Interface range FA01 through 4, because again, on our diagram here, FA01, 2, 3, and 4. I know there's a lot of labels up here, but it's FA01, 2, 3, and 4 on switch 2 all go up to the other switches and need to be in switch and trunking mode. Interface range FA01 through 4. Press enter. And we're in this time, we're going to do switch port mode trunk. And you'll automatically see, you know, them changing states and everything. Now, they don't tell us about a native VLAN in this particular lab, but if we had a native VLAN, we need to make sure to configure it on our trunk ports. Does anybody remember, just so we can review it as we're going through this, what the command is for configuring a native VLAN on a trunking port? Um, I think it would be, uh, I think it would be switch port native, and then it would be VLAN, the VLAN you need, right? Close. All right, so let's question mark our way through it. So switch port, and then trunk would be the next one. Oh. In native VLAN, whatever you wanted it to be. Okay. Now, we don't have that in this lab going on, so I'm not going to set that. But again, that's how you would do it. Switch port trunk, native VLAN, and then whatever it happens to be. I just forgot the trunk port. Yeah, yeah. And again, that's where that question mark comes in, right? If we can remember some of the command or at least type it in, it gives us an error. Remember, back it all the way up to that first word to see, hey, do I got the first word right? Okay, I got that one right. And then you can kind of piece your way through the command with that question mark. The other thing to review while we're here is remember, sometimes we have a situation where we've got our switch port plugged into a voice over IP phone and then the voice over IP phone plugged into our computer. That's how my office is set up at work. So to do that, you may have the PC in a VLAN, but there may also be a voice VLAN for the voice traffic. So you can do those. Uh, the PC in access mode, right, or that port in access mode for the PC and whatever VLAN it is, but you can also still set out the voice VLAN traffic. So that one, remember, is switch port voice and then VLAN, and you can piece your way through that command as well. And whatever number, usually it could be like 150, I know is used a lot in our packet tracer assignments.
So again, just reviewing those two topics while we're there. But anyway, we put them in trunking mode. And right now we're at 16%. Then it says configure all non-trunk ports on S2 as access ports. So that means anything that we haven't used yet, we need to put, because we've covered everything really. We did one through four as trunking. We did five through nine as access, 10 through 14 as access, 15 through 19 as access, 20 through 24 as access. That's all our fast ethernet ports. Now, if we need to look at what other ports we have, you can always do a do show run here. And we've got, uh, again, one, two, three, four in trunk mode, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, all in access mode, but we didn't do anything with G01 and G02 yet. Now they aren't plugged into anything, but they do want them in access mode technically because it says configure all non-trunk ports as access ports. We've already done 20 through 24 as fast ethernet as, uh, or sorry, five through 24 as access mode, one through five or one through four are already, um, Hold up, let me reset it and make sure I did it right. Fast Ethernet one through four is trunking mode, already taken off the board. Now everything else needs to be in access mode. We've already configured Fast Ethernet five through 24 as access mode. Now we need to do gigabit G01 and two. So we do interface G01 through, or sorry, interface range G01 through two, and then switch port mode access. Now they don't tell us to like put it in any type of um, VLAN traffic right now tagging. So that's okay. We just wanna make sure we put them in access mode. So interface range G zero slash one through two switch port mode access. And that should be good there. So all the stuff we've been doing so far is on S2. Now we're going to configure R1 to route between VLANs. Sub interface names should match the VLAN number. So let's go look at kind of what we got going on and configured here. So R1 and S1 here are has one cable here okay now remember if we've got a lot of vlan traffic going on and we've got one cable going from r1 to the switch here that's going to have to carry all the vlans so we got four potential vlans here vlan 10 vlan 20 vlan 30 vlan 40 that would have to be carried across this link between r1 and s1 now because of that that means that we want to configure router on a stick or sub interfaces, okay? So we're gonna have to configure R1 here, G00, we'll turn that on, but then we won't make any configurations directly to G00. Remember, we use our sub interfaces, so we're gonna go in and do interface G0 slash zero, it'll always start with that physical port, then dot 10 for VLAN 10. Then G0 slash zero dot 20 for VLAN 20. G0 slash 0.30 for VLAN 30 and G0 slash 0.40 for VLAN 40, okay? Um, now we only need to turn the physical interface on though, then we configure the sub interfaces and we'll kind of review how to do that. Another thing to note here is this is G01 traveling from switch one to R1, all right? We actually need to go put that in um, trunking mode on switch one and make sure it is because again, it has to be <laughs> For it to carry all of those VLANs. So let's let's start actually with that on S1. They might have already configured it that way, but let's double check. Uh, CLI tab is locked on S1. So they've already probably done it. So no worries there. But again, remember, as we're reviewing this on switch one in a real world situation where you're configuring everything, the port that leaves this switch and goes to the router for router on a stick must be in trunking mode. OK, so G01 here on switch one should have been in trunking mode. Now, it's already in trunking mode because they're not letting us configure it. So it must have already done that for us. 
So let's go up here to R1. And again, the physical port is G00. I know that from my diagram. So interface config T, and I'm gonna do interface G00, and I'm gonna do no shutdown. Okay, now that's it. Normally, I would configure IP addressing and a subnet mask here because that would be my default gateway most likely for my entire local area network. That is not the case with this one. We will have sub interfaces going. So we just need to go to interface G00 and do a no shutdown. Okay, so you see them negotiating there. And two, you'll see my chart over here where we've got G00 and then it'll say dot 10. That's for VLAN 10 traffic. That is where we're gonna do the configurations of the ports and they will become the default gateway. So right here, G00 is the default gateway for everything down here. We learned that that router interface becomes the default gateway for everything that is connected off to, right? That whole entire LAN. Now, even though all this stuff is in one LAN, all these PCs are kind of separated into different VLANs. So each VLAN will need its own default gateway separately. So you will have that ability to set four sub interfaces on this one physical interface. So based off of our address and chart up here, G0 slash 0.10. So we'll do interface G0 slash 0.10. And the reason I actually turn on the physical port first is because it will automatically, you see here, turn on all of my subsequent uh, sub interfaces as I continue going down. So that automatically turned me on here. And then we're gonna do dot one Q. Does anybody remember what this is doing? Um, I remember that I used to type it as dot IQ. That's wrong. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So it's definitely a dot one Q. Oh, and I forgot one word encapsulation or you can shorten it as in cap so what this does is it encapsulates that traffic and tags it for a certain vlan now for to keep it as simple as possible what we're doing here is we're naming the port for vlan 10 right g0 slash 0 dot 10 that dot 10 should follow the vlan then here we're going to say hey you need to be tagged for vlan 10 traffic so we do in cap dot one q 10 what that lets it know is you're going to encapsulate this traffic. The dot one Q and the end cap part will always stay the same. The TN there is what will change depending on what VLAN and sub interface you're doing. So here we're saying for VLAN 10, now we can set our IP addressing. So IP add 172.31.10.1, 255, 255.255.255. 224. And I'm not just coming up with this out of the air. It is in my addressing chart up here at the top. Um, now, if you forget the encapsulation part, what it's going to do is it's going to scream at you and say, hey, you aren't able to configure the IP addressing until you do the encapsulation. So it must be this order. Interface G0 size 0 0.10, the sub interface name there, then the encapsulation then the IP address information. If you try to do that out of order, it will not work. Okay, now let's go to our next one. Interface G0 size 0 0.20. You see it automatically turned on there for me because the physical port is on. Then IP add 172.31.20.1, 255, 255, 255. Oh, sorry, it was gonna scream at me. NCAP dot one Q and this time we're doing 20 because we're on sub interface for VLAN 20. Then IP add 172.31.20.1, 255, 255, 255, 240. Can you wait on just a second? Yep. I accidentally typed a dot after the one. Two, four, zero, one, seven, two, thirty-one, twenty-one. Okay, I'm good. All right, Dominique, you good over there? Good, good, Mr. Lucas. Okay, everybody else doing good? I think Jordan, you're in here. 
Uh, me, you, and Dominique are the only ones. Okay. All right. All right. Now we're going forward into interface G0 slash 0 0.30. And again, this is for VLAN 30, and we'll do incap.1q30, then IP add 172.31.30.1.255.255.255.128. If you're wondering what happened to Josh, he had another class. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, he can watch the recording. And then for the last one, We'll do interface G0 slash 0 0.40 and then encapsulation for 40 and then the IP addressing there. So interface G0 slash 0 0.40, encap.1q40, IP add 172.31.40.1.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.